I'm David Burns. I'm the manager at Burns Farms Herefords and Angus in Pikeville, Tennessee. We're currently running about 700 head of mama cows, including Herefords, Angus, and some recips. One of our main feedstuffs that we've used the last several years has been some Sudan grass hay uh, for the winter. Uh, and the last two years, we've planted a lot of that Sudan grass with an Atchison drill. Uh, we found that it stands very quickly. Uh, we get emergence very quickly in a great stand with the Atchison drill. Uh, we've planted it in multiple different soil types with great success. We planted it side by side with a with a conventional drill and found that, uh, that the seed, that the Sudan grass will emerge a little bit faster and a little bit thicker with, a, with the side by side. Uh, these, this drill has done a great job for us. Hi, this is David with Smoky Mountain Cattle. Today we're looking at the Atchison forage drill based out of New Zealand. This drill is a purpose-built no-till drill for forages for pasture management. This drill is available in two models, the grass farmer that we're with today and the Seedmatic, which we'll talk about in a later video. The grass farmer is on six inch row spacing. It has some pretty unique features that we're gonna go over. First are the 13 inch coulters that are on the front of the drill that is adjustable in down pressure using the center third link. Its specific purpose is to cut or slice the biomass if you are drilling into live sod. The second thing that's very simple about the drill is the baker boot. And we're gonna look up close at that. The baker boot is hooked to the tine that aerates as it travels through the soil profile. Uh, the seed box here is one unit that you can blend seed into using the foam drive system. And we'll look at the foam drive system up close. The seeding depth is adjusted on each side, the left and right side, with these tires. Very simple, no hydraulics. The seeding rate, or the pounds per acre that you have, is adjusted with the system on the far right hand side of the drill that can go from zero pounds per acre to 300 pounds per acre. Also, there is a rodent guard here that prevents any rodent from the ground if you've left seed in the seed box from traveling through the seed tubes up into the seed box. So stick with us as we look closer at all these things. So here we are with the coulter bar and their associated coulters. So in this nine foot grass farmer, we have 18 coulters for the corresponding tines and baker boots that we'll talk about later. So these coulters are 13 inches in diameter. They are paired with their mate through an axle that is on this cam mechanism. This cam moves up and down with spring tension that is in this captured square material here. This is greasable uh, for serviceability. The purpose of the coulters are to roll on the top of the ground to slice or cut trash, residue, or live biomass. The sole purpose for that is so that the baker boot does not become a rake and then rake and collect that trash as the drill moves forward. We're here with the tine and the baker boot that travels through the soil profile down here. Also, we have the seed tube. The seed tube is unique, and I have one here as a sample. This is the part that attaches up at the seed box. We have it corrugated on the outside, and the inside, the seed tube is smooth. So seed of any size travels through it. If the seed tube is bent, you know it doesn't get uh, blocked up or, or heaped up to where uh, seed does not travel to the bottom of the seed tube. So seed enters through here, travels through this solid steel tube, 
into the ground. It does not fall through the ground. That's an important takeaway here. So it's being placed where you want it to be placed. With the Baker boot, which I have one here, it is pinned on to this holder, the blue holder, with a roll pin right through here. This is nigh hard cast steel. It has wings on each side. I'll get to that in a second and the functionality of it. On the face of the Baker boot, this piece is tungsten. It is welded on. It will never wear out. Incredibly hard metal. However, what will wear down is the functionality of the wings of the Baker boot. Soil travels over this wing and then to the rear. On the bottom of the Baker boot here, we all know that we want a firm seed bed to plant into. So the weight of the drill is on all these pads on the bottom, in this case, 18, because we have a nine foot drill. On the back, you have the seed tube that comes in right here. Seed is dropped onto that firm seed bed with then soil pods traveling over this Baker boot wing on each side that travel over it and then fall onto the top of that seed that is deposited there. So then you have an eighth to a quarter of an inch of soil covering that seed at the depth that you plant, which creates that ideal terrarium shaped upside down hourglass uh, profile that the Baker boot cuts into the soil. So I'm standing with the transmission that drives the foam drive for the seating rake. The transmission sets that speed of the given seating rate that you provide regardless of the ground speed. So we're going to go over that. These units that say speed, seed from zero to 40, this is not the pounds per acre. This is the transmission setting that corresponds to the chart that is in the lid of the drill. On that chart, it's giving the seeding rate of pounds per acre from zero to 300 pounds per acre. You also look at the seed size or the given type of seed that you're gonna use. You then take those two things, those two inputs, and then the chart gives you an output of where to set the transmission. So all you do is you spin it up or down. So what's happening on the inside with this very simple device is you have this gear and chain set. On this far end down here, you have this small gear that is from the drive wheel. So when the drill is set on the ground and you are moving forward, it is driving. When the drill is up in the air and you're spinning around at the headlands of your rows, nothing in this will spin and therefore no seed will be lost, okay? So you've got the input of that and then you've got this input that is driving the continually variable transmission that is inside here. So this is the input of the transmission. The output is a small gear that then in turn drives the input of the foam drive that we're gonna look at in a moment. If you want to change the seating rate from below 150 pounds per acre to above 150 pounds per acre, you flip-flop this gear set with these four cap screws to this gear set. So the large gear goes here, the small gear goes here. And then the chart will tell you where to set the transmission. Okay, we're at the back of the machine of the grass farmer from Atchison. Uh, here you can see the two foam drive discs in the shot uh, from the 18 that are uh, on the nine foot machine here. So these foam drive discs spin, rotate, as the drive wheel uh, that is on the ground moves forward. So the, this is the input shaft from the transmission that we had talked about earlier. Um, this square bar rotates and therefore 
the foam drive system rotates. This is very simple to service. Um, each one of these components here have a foam drive disc, a spring, and a washer here. So this spring holds pressure against the foam drive from the housing. It is simply removed by loosening this bolt and sliding the square bar out to the left. And then each one of these components comes out very quickly for servicing. So to look at the foam drive system more closely, I have one of these sections removed as a sample. So this is how you are seeing it in the drill. When I rotate it sideways with the side view, you see the square area where the solid shaft would go through it that would control the speed at which this spins, which is given by two factors. One is the seating rate and the transmission setting, and the second being the ground speed. So when we open this here, you see the foam drive on the inside, and you see this hopper that narrows down to having no gap. It is the same dimension as this surface. And then you have where the seat is deposited, released into the seed tube. So what that means is that the seed, as it spins, as this device spins the foam drive, is indenting into this foam disc. So that is how we can feed out a corn seed to a mustard seed and anything in between and control that rate and even mixtures. That the mixtures will enter this hopper at the same rate that they were poured in because there is no exit when this is stationary and there's side spring pressure on it to this drill so you don't have seed sorting. Also in the floor here, you can see the rodent guard which is open right now, and then as it shuts, it blocks off each seed tube from getting to the foam drive and the seed that may be stored in the seed box.